Hey, you guys, good morning. I hope um, that you could see this okay. I'm in our building and the internet is not so great here. So um, anyway, here I am. It's Jane from Chalk Mercantile and Surface Anthology. And I am very excited, <laughs> as everybody knows, about the new Iron Orchid. Um, Look at this gorgeous transfer. And it's absolutely beautiful. We're not going to be using this today. I just wanted to show you. But this, this called Brocante, this transfer has eight gorgeous pages. It's just page after page of beautifulness. And let me just hit A and B. There I am. So this is one of the new things that I got in, the um, Brocante transfer, which I can't wait to use. And I will be putting together some project with that. And then the other thing I wanted to show you guys today, well, I'll show you the stamp, which is gorgeous. It's the Fruitful Harvest stamp. And it is pumpkins, oak leaves, which I know a lot of you love, acorns. It's two sheets of apples, leaves, all kinds of gorgeous fall, Thanksgiving kind of beautifulness. And a lot of this you could also use for Christmas. I know for me, the oak leaves and the acorns will be beautiful for the Christmas time. So we have that in stock also. What we're, I'm going to show you how to use today are the Iron Orchid new molds. This one's called Frames. Isn't this beautiful? Of course, I've already started using it. And this one is Cameos. And for any of you that are in the Merrymakers um, subscription box that I have or are thinking about it, this is going to be in next month's box. You can order it this month. But it's absolutely, both of them are just stunning. And the little project we're going to do today, I'm going to show you how to use the molds. And then I'm going to show you how to decoupage. Look at this little guy on this piece of tissue. But here's one of the molds. Isn't that beautiful? They're, they're really exceptional. Every I say that every time when IOD comes out with a new um, uh, release. And look at the cameo. Isn't she gorgeous? Now let me just give you a little hint here. This is what happens. I glued her down on a piece of raw wood like this. And then I painted it. And you can see... A little bit of the shrinkage around the edges so it happens all the time all I'm going to do is paint around this with white I don't know how I'm gonna decorate it yet but I could just take the white that I used and paint around but to save time when I do put these together like this one I'll paint the boards white first and then let it dry and then glue down my mold and then paint that. So first thing I want to do, because I'm actually going to be using um, metallic paint, the Authentico Metallico paints that are absolutely gorgeous. I don't have my gold leaf with me today. I did want to gold leaf it, but I don't have it, so <laughs> we're not doing that. So first thing we're going to do is paint this with a base color. And I'm using, it's by um, Authentico, it's vintage. It's called Dark Rust. I need a base underneath that gold. I just don't want to put it on top of white. I want it to be a little bit stronger than that. And while we're letting that dry, I'm going to show you how to use the molds. So I've got my little artist brushes here. And don't get nervous when you're doing this that, you know, if you hit the white, you can always grab the white paint and touch it up after. Wet my little brush and don't be like me and work out of 
the container. You know, you, you should pour it out first. And I'm just gonna put a really rough base down. Just so I have something that the gold can kind of, it provides like a, a rich base. In fact, if you look at old um, antique gold leaf mirrors, I frames, I'm sorry, they would have red, a red base. And you can do, if you're doing silver leaf, you can do a beautiful um, cool base, like a blue, like a deep blue. You could really affect um, the color of the leaf, the, you know, the mood with any of them, like the copper, silver, or gold. And yep, there's real sterling silver leaf, which I haven't used yet, but I'm sure is absolutely stunning. Okay, so there's our little frame painted. I'm gonna let this dry. I do have my, I don't have my blow dryer today. I have my crazy heat gun, so if we have to use it, we'll use that. I am known for burning things with it though. Um, throw my brush into some water. And the next thing we're going to do is I'm gonna open up the clay. I use the Iron Orchid paper clay for this. And as you see, I keep it really wrapped well. If you don't, it will dry out and you cannot reconstitute it. Some people will even put like a little damp paper towel inside. I do this. I think if, you, if you're gonna have it hanging around a long time, you should put something damp in there, but this clay is beautiful. So here's the clay, and which one we'll use? We'll do this fancy frame right here. So you need your mold, you need your clay, and you need some cornstarch to put in the little frames, in the mold, so that it doesn't stick. Now you can also use these molds for um, sugar work. Can you imagine these has, as cookies? I actually posted a picture on my Facebook page of um, sweets that Milton's daughter made with these, and they're just breathtaking. I mean, for a wedding, these would be amazing. All right, so we put our cornstarch down, and then grab some of the clay, and it's really, really nice to work with. And then you just start pressing it down. So if you can also bake in these, you can um, bake, I think up till, up to four, four, 25, I'm not sure, but they're silicone, they're food grade, and there's um, no reason you can't do that. Just don't use the same set for your cooking as you do for your crafting. I'm gonna add a little bit more. And you do wanna take the time to really press into this because these are very, very detailed, especially the cameos, because you want their facial features to come out. You know, she's beautiful, her profile, hers. We have a little Roman guy down here. So you do wanna take your time and really get in there. Then I'm actually gonna use you need to use something to push away the clay. Don't use anything metal because there's a little lip 
right here and we don't want to gouge it and metal will do that. So a credit card, anything like that is fine. I'm going to use the, the little stick that you use to burnish on the transfers. And I kind of just start at the edge and push it out. And save all that clay. And people use resin. Um, I haven't used resin. They also use a clay by Ranger. And it's a, a clay that when you hit it with heat, it gets really, really hard. It's like porcelain. Okay. So our frame is ready. All you do, it's going to pop out really easily because we used our cornstarch. You just... And look at that, isn't that beautiful? Now, the really great thing too, is you glue it on while it's wet. If you put this on a flat surface and wait for it to dry, thinking, oh, it's gonna be nice and flat, and you put it on a surface that's not nice and flat, you're gonna have a lot of gaps and everything. So you really wanna do this while it's wet. So I'm gonna use see I'm gonna try this tight grip glue because I have it here and I'm not even sure if that's how it's supposed to look <laughs> um what brush should I use No, I think it's too old. It's very gelatinous. <laughs> oh, I'm at my building and I had I brought all my craft stuff to my little workshop at my house. So, and I left a lot of stuff here and you know us crafters, makers, artists, we have a lot of stuff. All right. The Elmers has held up really well. So normally I use Aileen's Tacky Glue. This one's just done. I couldn't, I don't have all day to wait for it to come out. Elmer's glue is great. And the wood glue I love too. That works out really well. And I'm actually going to use, I'm really picky about my brushes. <laughs> So just lay that. Now we kind of have an idea of where you're going to place your um, mold. And if you're one of those who's a real perfectionist, you can make little marks where you want it to go and then place it there and then just paint over them. Like maybe with a pencil or a piece of chalk. All right, I just take my glue I put a lot of glue on and I put it right up to the edge. And they look, these look really delicate, but they're a little more hardy than you think. So don't worry that you're gonna wreck them. Okay, make sure you get all the way up to the edge. And then I just turn this. Hands are gonna get a little icky and you place it, and there's a little bit of time. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? And again, if you're a perfectionist, you could go grab a ruler, make sure that it's the same distance on all four sides. And you know me, I work always from a piece of cardboard so I don't contaminate stuff. So that is it. Now this, I could paint right now. I could paint this right now with no problem. And I'm just, I go around and I check the edges and press down. And I'll show you how I paint it in a minute. Now, we want to check on our um, little frame. So I'm going to move this over. And it is still wet, so guess what? I get to use my heat gun. 
I gotta move all my paper stuff out of the way. Okay. And there we go. It's so deceptive because I'm used to being a former hairstylist. I'm used to, you know, the real blowing of the blow dryer. And I'm like, oh, this isn't hot. I, I can hardly hear it. Well, let me tell you, it gets really, really hot. That feels good. Off. Let it cool down. So now the next thing we're going to use is this Metallica Gold. Actually, what we're going to use next is we're going to decoupage the bird down. Then we're going to do the gold. So what I did is I have this tissue paper. Isn't this beautiful? And I kind of went through and right over this so I kind of was going like this and placing the birds on it until I found one I really liked so say if I wanted this little bird right here and I kind of just felt around and then I just took a little and I don't have it with me now but you could just take like the end of this brush and go around and mark like that. And then I took an X-Acto knife and I just went around on that line and I cut the bird out really, really easily. So, there's so many of these tissues and they're absolutely gorgeous. So then, we need some decoupage medium. Pour a little bit of this out. And you don't need a lot. And I'll use this brush. And you just apply a coat of your decoupage. And then take your bird or whatever you have. You could do so many things. You could print on tissue and put family pictures in if you want. How cute would that be? And there's our little guy. And then you just take some more decoupage. And brush that on to seal it down. So look at how easy that is. Isn't that sweet? There are some little wrinkles. It does not bother me at all. This does have like a domed um, surface, this little frame. So you have to be aware of that. How sweet is that? So we'll let this dry a little bit and I'm gonna show you how I paint the wet molds. And then we'll use the gold. And I've got my paint and my favorite FIFO bottles. These are the best. You just need a little bit. And I'll grab another brush. And you literally just paint these while they're wet.
it's, it's really this easy. And when I do paint them wet, I will, like, if I'm doing a bunch of them at the same time, I will um, glue them down and leave them for a, just a few minutes just to kind of let them set. They do begin to dry the molds, you know, very, very quickly. Um, so I'll give them, like, five minutes and then do the painting. That's it. So that's all painted. We'll let that dry. It has its base now. And I'm going to hit this guy with the heat gun just to get that set. It's really fast. All right, so the last step is for the beautiful gold paint. And what I will probably do with this, I'm going to put the gold paint down. I will probably get some gold leaf later and put that on top of the gold paint. And it just makes the most beautiful um, gilded effect. I know I'm not going to need a lot, so we'll just do that. But look at this. Isn't it gorgeous? It's super metallic. All right. And I definitely need a little artist brush. Grab my paper towel. And I think it's going to need a couple of coats. But it's really beautiful. Now, how many of you guys are getting ready for Christmas? It's it's barreling towards us. I love it. I'm already, like, I've got my, well, I've got the Merry Makers group, and I have my tree up, and I just love it. I am one of these people, you could put your tree up really early. <laughs> it's fine with me. It just makes the whole holiday last that much longer. The other thing you could use, and I know you guys have heard me talk about it, is Rub and Buff. It is a metallic wax, very intense metallic wax, and I use it a lot on hardware, and it would be beautiful on these frames. Isn't that beautiful? And by having the brown underneath it, it just gives it the richness of like a wood frame. I could have done red too, like a really um, warm red, like they used to do with the old, they still do, the gesso under the old frames. 
but this is it. This is what this is what you do. And these molds are just like life changing for me. I just love them. But look at that. And this is just one coat of the gold. And these would be so sweet. I can even grab, um, I put these on scraps of wood. But if this was narrower, you can make little ornaments, little wall hangings. And like I said, if you print family pictures, maybe in a sepia look, and put them inside of these frames, it would be absolutely gorgeous. But it's very, very easy. It's really quick. It's such a fun project. I hope you give it a try. I've got a few left in the shop. Go to chalkmercantile.com. And for those of you that are interested in the Merrymakers um, subscription box, and next month is going to be Iron Orchid Molds and Clay, um, you can go to surfaceanthology.com and just click on the Merrymakers subscription box. Let me know if you have any questions about this. I hope you give them a try and um, let me know what you think. All right, you guys have a wonderful day. Good seeing you and happy painting.